Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the concept on strong oxidation of alkenes. Now for alkene functional groups, what happens when it is subjected to hot acidified KMnO4? Or sometimes we can say that this is KMnO4 in dilute HDSO4 heat. What will happen is the carbon-carbon double bond would break and I will chop this carbon-carbon double bond and I'll get two different fragments. So what each of this carbon would become, it depends on the groups that are attached to each of this carbon. So basically, what we have to do is we have to deduce based on the groups that are attached to each carbon, what this carbon will be oxidized to versus what the other carbon would be oxidized to. So therefore, the three scenarios would be here. The alkene carbon can either be bonded to two alkyl groups, R group, R group, an R group and a hydrogen or two hydrogen groups. So we only have these three different situations. So on oxidation using hot acidified KMnO4, what each of these carbon would become, actually it is fairly easy to reason out. So we will go through this part by part. Now on oxidation, because the carbon double bond would break, so now this carbon is short of two bonds. So what we will do is we will cover this double bond with an oxygen. So it will form a C double bond O. So if it is a CR bond, then we will just ignore that bond. If this is a CR bond, we will just ignore that bond. So for carbon bonded to two R groups, it is fairly straightforward. The product will be a ketone functional group. It just looks something like this. It is a C double bond O. Then the carbon is bonded to two R groups. So this functional group, as mentioned, this is a ketone. And later we can use K to annotate the functional group ketone. Now, how about the next instance where you have the carbon bonded to an R and a hydrogen? Again, this double bond, we have to cover it with oxygen. So that carbon will continue to have four bonds. Then what we do next is if you have a CH bond, we will insert an oxygen between the carbon and the hydrogen. The CR bond, we will continue to ignore. Then the conversion in this case, you notice this carbon will be converted to an acid function group because basically this will just be a C double bond O and an OH group. So the product that we are expected to get will be something like this, C double bond O and an OH group. This functional group is now our acid functional group. So if it's an RH, it will be oxidized to acid functional group. Now finally, I have carbon bonded to two hydrogen groups. Based on the method that we have discussed, if you have a C double bond, I need to cover this with oxygen. If you have a CH bond, I need to insert oxygen between the CH bond. So I have one CH bond, I need to squeeze an oxygen between the carbon and the hydrogen. There's another CH bond, I need to insert this oxygen in between this carbon and the hydrogen. Actually, what this would become, it will be something like this. If I just follow what I've drawn, this will be a C double bond O group, and then I have an OH group and another OH group. Now this guy is just my H2CO3. This product is actually our carbonic acid, H2CO3. But it doesn't stay in this way. You undergo rearrangement. You undergo rearrangement reaction to give me carbon dioxide and water. So let me just highlight this so that it is clearer. So the product that we are expected to get would be carbon dioxide and water. So again, we need a short form notation. We just use C to annotate the carbon dioxide form. So actually this is fairly straightforward. Based on the groups attached to the carbon, I can predict what functional group it will become. If it is a RR, it will be oxidized to K for ketone. If it is a RH, it will be oxidized to A for acid. If it is a HH, it will be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. All right, so let's have some examples. Now, if I have this particular alkene and I oxidize this using hot acidified KMnO4, first thing, we have to chop the carbon-carbon double bond. Then now I have two different carbons to consider because carbon number one and carbon number two, now they're separate. Each of these carbon will be oxidized to different things based on the groups that are attached to that carbon. So if I look at carbon number one, carbon number one, it is attached to hydrogen and hydrogen. So that was the third case that we have discussed. It will be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. What I can do is I just use the letter C 
to annotate this carbon here. Later, I'll just convert this to carbon dioxide and water. Now, how about carbon position 2? Carbon 2 is attached to this CH3 group, which is an R group, and a hydrogen. So carbon number 2 is attached to an RH. It will be oxidized to A4 acid. So we have sorted out what function groups these two guys will be converted to. Then it is a very simple process of just writing out the product. Now, writing out the product, carbon position 3 is a CH3. So carbon position 2 is an acid group. I can just write this directly as a COOH group. Then carbon position 1 will be carbon dioxide and water. I can plus CO2 plus water. Now to help us visualize the carbons more clearly, I will number the carbon. This is carbon position 1, or rather used to be carbon 1. Now it becomes CO2 and water. This is carbon position 2, which is this guy, oxidized to acid group. This will just be made as a methyl group. Originally, it is a methyl group. Final product, it is still a methyl group. So the product, in the case of strong oxidation of this alkene, I'll get this acid functional group followed by CO2 and water. All right, let's have another example. What happens if you have this alkene here? We have the double bond between carbons 2 and 3. Same thing if it is subjected to hot acidified KMO4. I just need to chop this double bond. And now I have carbon 2 and carbon 3 to consider. Carbon position 2 is bonded to an R group, CH3. Another R group, also a CH3. So this will be oxidized to K4 ketone. Carbon position 3 is bonded to a bigger group, CH2, CH3 group, my ethyl group. So this is an R group bonded to hydrogen. Carbon position 3 is bonded to an RH. This will be oxidized to A4 acid. Again, once we have sorted this out, the rest is easy. I just need to write out the product. On oxidation, this will be an acid functional group. So I have a CH3, CH2, a COOH functional group. Remember, this is carbon number 5. This used to be carbon number 4. This used to be position 3. So I've oxidized this carbon to an acid functional group. Now what happens to carbon number 2? It becomes a ketone. So I know that this carbon will be oxidized to a ketone functional group. In terms of drawing the product, we know that it will be a CH3, C double bond O, and a CH3. So the product will look something like this. I have a CH3, C double bond O, and a CH3. Now remember in terms of labeling, this carbon is position 1, this is the CH3. This carbon, which is the position 2, will be oxidized to a ketone. This CH3 is the substituent here. So what we have done is we have converted this position 2 to a ketone function group. So therefore, the oxidation of this alkene, we will get an acid followed by a ketone. Alright, so that was the discussion involving the strong oxidation or oxidative cleavage of alkenes. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up. Like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.